So we have many special features. Uh, the first thing is that the SM9 uh, is intended to be used in near field and midfield environment as well. So from 1.5 meters up to 4 meters. Okay. Interesting thing is that these monitors have a very wide frequency response, 30 Hz to 40K. And why 40K? Why 40K? Because 40K, for sure, you do not hear it. But this tweeter can go up to 40K. So it means that it can reproduce even more details in 16Ks or 10Ks. Because the impulse response is that good that it can reach 40Ks. So it means that if you want to precisely adjust the reverb tails, you will get all the details, even the slightest details, reproduced by the tweeter. Whereas if the tweeter limit frequency response is 20k, sometimes the tweeter will not have enough time to react and you will miss some details at some point. And it's perfect to have a monitor like that, but, but you get, a, I guess, a wrong impression because people in the homes do not have that kind of high quality systems. No, the, that's exactly the opposite. That's to say, it's always obviously better regarding a mix transfer quality to achieve the best recording and tracking quality right from the beginning and then transfer it into, let's say, regular world instead of doing regular mix on some kind of speakers where the transfer will be way less on let's say homolio systems as an example. And what is your solution? So the solution is really easy to understand. It's based on a freeway design composed of a new beryllium inverted dome tweeter, six and a half inch mid and eight inch sub acting with 11 inch passive on the top. So that's very interesting because thanks to this technology, you can keep a very compact size monitoring system while having a very wide frequency response in the low end. So that's to say 30 Hertz. Another key point is that thanks to this technology, you will have a very stable tonal balance from very low SPL to very high SPL as well, because this passive radiator is acting like a port. So let's say with a bass reflex enclosure, you can get a very good frequency response in a compact size cabinet, which is the case like this. And the other thing is with bass reflex, when you go up to a certain SPL, you will decrease the tonal balance and you will change the bass frequency because you will not have enough space in the vent to move and remove all the air. One of the big mistakes most of the engineers do when they cannot really control the low end is that what are they going to do? They're going to compress everything. And when they're going to compress everything, they're going to have a very, very, very narrow stereo image. Maybe sometimes the solution is to just EQ 30 Hz or 40K and let the others breathing, you know. Instead of that, you will compress everything and you will kill everything. So that's why you have to control everything right from the very low end to the far top end. EQ it most of the time and not to over compress it. But why can you use this loudspeaker as a two-way system then? And then that's the other thing. So that's a three-way design. But the thing is that you have two monitors into one box. So this part is totally sealed here. And you can go from a very wide frequency response, 30 Hz, 40K, to a two-way solution. So it's a kind of super NS10 included by pressing on the side button here called focus. So when acting on this, you will deactivate the sub and you will also change the cutoff frequency of this driver. So this driver will start working at 90 Hertz and the tweeter will stop around 20K frequency response wise. So thanks to this, you will be able to AB your mix really precisely from a very, very top end studio monitor to a regular multimedia speakers and let's say base challenge system such as iPod docking station most of the time you use at home to play music through. So thanks to this you AB your mix and you can make sure that first of all you will not lose the kick and the dynamic of a track and then you can also make sure that the EQ and the area between the low frequency and low mid is fine. You do not have hyped in the low mid or you do not have boost in the bass that is idling some low mid details. And then you can also precisely adjust the voices level thanks to this key function because you get rid of all the bass and you stay focused on the low mid, mid and high frequencies. And what about this 
flat screen, really flat screen televisions with really, really small loudspeakers. How can you compare that to your system? The key thing and the thing you have to understand is, be it the two-way or the three-way system, it's really flat. So, obviously, as you have a very natural frequency and very flat frequency response curve, the transfer quality will be better because if you are mixing on some kind of system where you have a boost at 160 Hz as an example, obviously if you are listening to uh, the same program on TV speakers that have exactly the contrary, uh, all if you EQ it on your system, you're going to have a big dip on the TV. So that's why it's really important to have something really flat because flat is, let's say, the average. So you can have a boost there or a dip there. You will always get something better because it's really flat and natural sounding.